This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. So I have a service call on a kitchen AC that's not working and I pulled up the internet thermostat and this is what I get. It says it's been offline for a full day. So I could, um, you know, try to call the manager and have them go try to reset breakers, have them try to go on the roof, but inevitably, more than likely, I'm going to have to go out there and I'd rather not prolong. I have anxiety and I just want to get there and get my hands on it. I don't want to sit there on the phone for a half an hour, you know, playing with them back and forth. Like that's just me personally. I don't like to try to do that because inevitably I usually have to go out. So I'd rather just solve it myself. So we're on in route and uh, we'll see what we can get to. This is uh, Saturday, it's uh, September 14th, I believe. And uh, it's uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, so. All right, so this is my kitchen AC. Um, the system says it's completely offline. So we're gonna start checking power and go from there. So I don't wanna turn the disconnect switch off yet. Because of this thing has the CLO boards, the compressor lockout boards right there, turning off the disconnect switch can reset a safety. So the first thing you wanna do is test between X and C. See if you have 24 volts. That would indicate that we're off on lockout not registering so now we're going to check between C and R we don't have any voltage so now we can go ahead and check main power we don't need to go into the disconnect switch we can just check it right here to see if we've got main power nothing there looks like we got something there so the fact that we had nothing here is indicating that we've got a blown fuse. So we're gonna go ahead and open up that disconnect switch and go from there. So I've got my meter set on tone and we'll go ahead and check across the fuses. Power's off. We have continuity. I've already verified power is off too. So we got a blown fuse. Now the next thing we wanna check is if we have power this with one hand. I've been trying to get better at it because it's a little bit safer to use one hand, but sometimes it's a pain. We've got 198, it's, a, it's 105 outside, so this is what I'm talking about when I say we have dirty power. We have low voltage issues for sure when we get low. So we've got three phase power coming in. Another thing that I'm noticing is things seem loose in here. I'm just gonna do the disconnect switch. Things seem loose. Probably torque down on those. Nope, no torquing. They don't tighten. Don't ski. So, all right, we got to uh, figure out why the fuse blew. It's line two, so we're gonna ohm everything out to ground, or check everything to ground. Spin all the motors your fan motors down here before we try to turn anything on. That one spins. Let's go down in here and spin this one. That one spins. Um, obviously we can't test the compressors until we turn on power. Looking at the contactors. They're not great. Definitely some pitting there. Um, we'll open up the blower, check out the blower. We'll check the capacitors and then check everything to ground before we try to uh, turn anything on. It's the blower motor. It spins. It's not locked up. The wheel's kind of dirty, but the belt's kind of decent. Looks like we got a pulley going bad from the wear on that belt. It's glazing it really good. Yeah, pulley's bad. You can tell just by looking at it, but it's glazed out and it's not flat. If I had my gauge, I'd show it to you guys. All right, so we're just going to kind of investigate and see if we can see any electrical shorts. Okay, so I've got my meter set on continuity. Had it set on continuity. There you go. Okay, and then I'm just going to check everything to ground. Just find a known ground and do it. So we're just going to go down to ground and listen for tone. Um, I'm not going to get it on camera right now, but 
We'll just go through and check everything. Pulled out the run capacitors for the condenser fan motors. Uh, we're running 9.83, so that's within 5% still. Probably still recommend replacing it, but that's not my problem. So we'll test the other one now. So the other capacitor. Is uh, it's showing nothing, but I also have a dead battery, so I need to go get a battery in this thing before I go any further. But we're just going through everything like usual, big picture diagnosis. We know that those contactors look like junk. That one looks pretty bad over there, too. So we're just going through it step by step. We'll get a new battery in that guy and test it properly. All right, now I got new batteries in there. So we got, yeah, we're still not getting anything good. Yeah, so I've got a bad tap. Let's try one more thing just to make sure that I'm getting good contact. There we go. Two microfarads. So, yeah, we got a bad cap. So we'll get that replaced. And yeah, it's a little swollen. It's not bad though, but yeah, obviously bad. So I'll go ahead and replace that. I brought one up. And uh, we'll get it wired back in, and then we'll go through the rest of the stuff. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pull these fuses out. Notice I've got spare fuses in there. I like to leave spare fuses so that way we can save ourselves a headache. Ooh, this is really tight, man. Uh, when I change fuses, I change all three at the same time. Woo! Man, those things are tight. It's crazy. It shouldn't be that hard. Ooh, that one's loose. That one could be our problem. No, actually that was the wrong leg. So we'll get the fuses changed, get the new ones in there, make sure that they're good, and we'll probably have to turn it on after that. Before I stick my hand in there, because I used a fuse puller to get them out, I'm gonna just double check that this disconnect switch is actually working and shuts off voltage. So we'll uh, put this guy right here. And we can go ahead and check it right here. Because if it was stuck on, it would be right here that we would be getting voltage. Nothing, nothing nothing so we're dead so check to make sure that these new fuses I put in are good and it's toning out so that's good and it's toning out so we're good on that I'll check the fuse figure out which one's bad that one's bad yeah I gotta check them a different way but I'll check these to make sure that they're bad and then all the two that are still good I'll put them in the disconnect in case I blow a fuse when I turn it on. People ask why I change three fuses when I change one, okay? Look at this. You can tell that this fuse overheated. I don't know if this is the method. Sometimes they have visual indicators on them to tell you that it's tripped. But you notice how faded that one is. But then if you notice, this one right here has got a lot of orange up in the top too. So this one looks like it overheated. Maybe it didn't blow, but it's almost gonna blow. So that's why when I, when I have a blown fuse, I change all three because we might've put stress on one of the other ones. If you figure everything in this unit is at least um, 208 single phase, so it's gonna take power from both of those. So if you blow or have a direct short on one leg and it blows that fuse, the potential that the other fuse could have been damaged is, is there. So that's why I change all three when I change them. Gonna go ahead and pull this uh, knife cover off so we can see the disconnect knives and make sure that they actually uh, look okay and don't look burnt. And uh, you know, for this, because I'm close to the high voltage, I'm gonna use my uh, insulated screwdrivers to uh, make sure that we're being safe. The knives don't look horrible, but there's definitely some corrosion on them where they've been touching. This one looks like it's been getting hot. It's like a greenish color. Yeah, so there's definitely some corrosion there. But it doesn't look like it's arcing. So we'll see, but it looks like an overheat for sure on these two legs. Um, I'm not gonna change the contactors yet. I wanna get a big picture look at everything and I wanna kinda try to see what it is. Short of a direct short, which I don't see any, we're gonna go ahead and turn this guy on. Um, we'll leave that open. Okay, power's on. And then we're gonna watch everything slowly turn on and verify that it works. Looks like 
one compressor turned on, the second one hasn't turned on yet. Both condenser fan motors turned on and the inner blower. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the panels on and then we can amp everything from in here. Both condenser fan motors are running. We're gonna amp them out right here. They're allowed to run 3.2 amps. We're running 2.3, 2.38. So condenser fan motors aren't over amping anymore, but that bad capacitor would definitely make that thing maybe pull off rotor. That was the second stage compressor turned on. So all our compressors are on and running. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is test our disconnect. We're gonna let it run for another few minutes. Um, and then we're gonna put a uh, laser thermometer and check the temperature on the disconnect. And uh, so we're gonna let this run. This whole unit is falling apart. Like look at this panel right here. This thing is just disintegrated, falling into pieces. And then uh, the whole thing's shaking. Fan motors are out of balance. This thing is it's beat down, man. All right, let's see if I can visually show this to you guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test on the lugs, okay? 110, 109, 108, 106, 125. That's weird. There's a high high temperature on that top lug. 106. 107. So that's interesting. I'm gonna let it run for a little bit longer. Let's see if we get anything different. Let's go ahead and give this guy a little tight and see if we can get anything out of it. Still being bold and steady. Nope. It's making good content. It's tight. Nope. Those things are tight. It's interesting. There's something going on there. I think it's a problem in the disc mix switch because that middle leg, which is the fuse that was blown, has 123 on the top, but then it's lower voltage coming out of the disc mix. That's interesting. Usually you see the opposite. Let's check it again. 113, 125, 107. 109, 106, 105. It's very interesting. Very, very interesting. Let's check the fuses. 122, 109, 122, 107, 114, 118, 106. Oh. Okay, let's give these knives a push. Oh yeah, ooh, that whole thing is moving. Yeah, the whole disconnect like moved right here when I pushed on this one. The whole thing, it's like the disconnect is busted inside. Yeah, there's something going on there. So what I'm gonna do, I don't have a disconnect switch. And if I can get them going, I'm gonna lube that up with some uh, silicone grease, some uh, dielectric grease. So that way we make a better connection. And then uh, we're definitely gonna write them up for a disconnect switch because I just don't like this. Uh, but we're gonna still keep checking everything else out. So, contactors, even though I know they're pitted, we're gonna check voltage draw. Nothing. 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 They look like crap though, so we're changing those for sure. So, um, I already checked the middle one, that one's fine. Uh, last thing we have to do, it looks like our suction lines are sweating up. That's nice and good. We're gonna go ahead and put some service gauges on this guy and check out the charge. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up my profile and measure quick. Um, I don't need to worry about system ID because I'm not recording models and serial numbers. We're gonna start by changing the configuration to a package unit. I'm working on a seven and a half ton carrier unit. Oh, that's a seven, we need to go seven and a half. Seven and a half tons. Uh, let's set our sear rating. This is an older unit, so it's going to be 10 to 12. Let's go ahead and check our metering device. It's going to be fixed orifice metering device. And everything else is going to be auto-calculated. Go ahead and hit submit. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and scroll over uh, to outdoor measurements. Um, and we're going to go ahead and set our outdoor air temperature of 105 degrees. 
and we are ready to go ahead and hook our probes up to everything and we can see what happens after that. All right, so this is the first stage. Um, we'll go back to the beginning. Let's start out with the beginning here. So, um, we are running a little bit low on the suction pressure, a little bit high on the head pressure. We have a little high on the superheat, just about being too high on the sub -point. Our air temperatures, I would expect that we have a really high return because uh, it does have an outdoor air, or it has an economizer, but it's manually open because the economizer is disconnected. So we're gonna run higher than normal uh, return air because it's mixing. Um, supply air, 60 degrees. Eh. All right, I'm gonna tell you right now that I'm leaning towards a restriction. But before I condemn the metering device, I want to uh, go ahead and check the suction dryer. This unit has a big suction dryer on it, and I wanna make sure there's not a pressure drop across it. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and switch over the uh, suction clamp, or suction pressure transducer. Uh, so it's 74 PSI on the outlet side of the suction dryer. Let's check the inlet side of the suction dryer. All right, so it looks like we have a little bit of a pressure drop, about one and a half to two PSI. That's not too alarming right now. Um, I'm leaning towards a restriction in the metering device. Let's see what Measure Quick says based on the sub cooling. Measure Quick says there might be a restriction in the liquid line or maybe undercharged with refrigerant. So. All right, let's go ahead and uh, jump on over to the second stage and see how that one's running. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over the suction pressure clamp. So you see we're on the outlet right now. We're gonna go ahead and go on the inlet of that suction part. Okay, so the second stage looks a lot better. We definitely have some high head pressure issues, so we might need to split and clean that condenser. Suction pressure's a little bit on the low side, but the superheat's good. But look at that subcooling, it's about the same. So. I don't know if the other one has a metering device problem. It might just be low on charge on that first unit. So I'm not gonna do too much more today because it's Saturday night. I just wanna get this up and running and I got it running. We're gonna come back, we'll submit a quote, let them know. Um, this unit's a piece of junk, so I'd really like to uh, tell them to change it, but I don't know if they'll go that path. All right, so. We're up and running, lots of problems. I'm gonna submit a quote to replace the disconnect switch, contactors. We're probably gonna clean that condenser. We might need to split it, although it doesn't look too bad. We seem like we're running high head. Um, I'm sure the filters look like junk. I'm not even gonna open that up right now. It's cooling down. So, you know, this is how stuff happens. So check this out. I turned this guy back off to, uh, I lubed up the disconnect with some grease and then put all the panels back on. Turn it back on. I don't know if you guys can hear this. The bearing and the motor sound like junk now. So we could have a problem with the motor or something too. Yeah, everything checks out okay. I tested the uh, voltage, making sure it wasn't single phasing. It's not. And then uh, the last one is right up here. got the right voltage it's just uh, it sounds like junk it sounds like it could be the motor and the bearing inside the blower assembly so hopefully it makes it through the weekend yeah, it's a motor bearing because uh, I ran it without the belt and the thing was shaking so yeah and I can feel it in the motor too you can feel it it's got like a dry spot it's not a greasable motor so I don't know if it's gonna make it through the weekend or not but We'll get the specs off of it too. So let's recap. We had a Saturday afternoon, evening-ish service call on a kitchen AC that wasn't working. Um, I thought it was a little interesting. I showed you guys the screenshot of the internet thermostat and that uh, it had been down for at least a day. Um, you know, and I kind of expressed my uh, the anxiety that I get when it comes to those service calls. You know, and I don't want to put you guys or give you guys the wrong impression. I don't mind helping a customer out on the phone, you know, like, you know, if they call me and say, Hey, is there anything we can do to try to solve this problem? Yeah, sure. Check your breakers, check your thermostat. But other than that, I'm not really going to 
by choice say, Hey, do you want to check this? Do you want to check that? Do you want to look at this? Do you want to look at that? Because it just leads me on having to wait a half an hour and an hour, you know, when the customer says, yeah, um, I turned the breaker on and off. Well, was it tripped? Oh, I don't know. Um, but I'll call you back in a couple hours. You know, then I'm sitting here going, gosh, I know the service call is going to come. So anyways, I just like to just get it done myself. That's the way that I do things. Okay. So, um, got to the restaurant, found line two fuse blown, went through my processes of checking for anything that could blow the fuse, found the capacitor, looked for any direct shorts, couldn't find any, um, saw the contactors were bad. You know, I like to look at everything, big picture diagnosis. I'm not a throw a fuse in there and see if it blows again kind of person. Okay. I like to investigate everything that I can in my power to the best of my ability. I'm not going to spend two days, but I mean, to the best of my ability, spin all the motors, see if there's anything locked up. Um, the reason why I do that is because you can create problems. It can be a dangerous situation and you can cause issues. I've told stories before of how I reset breakers and then it blows a main and it just so happened that the main was broken and I couldn't reset it. I mean, it, things like that have happened to me. So again, the reason why I make these videos and share these experiences with you is to show you the mistakes that I've made. Okay. So from personal experience, I don't reset breakers. I don't change fuses without doing a quick check to see if there's anything that caused them to happen. Okay. Um, also went through the fact that I like to change all three fuses or both fuses, depending on if it's single or three phase at the same time, because in my opinion, there could be stress and or fatigue put on the opposite fuse that didn't blow, change them all, leave some spares. Um, other than that, you know, I went through the operations of the unit, found that the, um, the unit looked like it had some issues as far as refrigerant charge goes. Okay. Um, but there was something going on there because both of them were running higher than normal head pressure, both stages, and both of them are running a little bit high on the sub cooling, a little bit higher than I was comfortable with. Okay. So, um, but that second stage, the superheat was pretty darn good. Okay. Now it's also possible in hindsight, looking at everything, it's also possible that there could have been some airflow issues because at first I didn't notice that the indoor blower motor was running funny. It didn't sound funny. It wasn't over amping. And, and you know what I realized as I was editing this video, I didn't catch um, on film that I had actually, uh, amped out the compressors and the indoor blower motor at the same time too. For some reason, I don't know if my camera didn't work or whatever, but I, I only got the amping out of the condenser fan motor. So when I amped them, they weren't amping high, which is strange, but it was when I was wrapping everything up and I went to go put the panel back on, I noticed, Hey, what's that noise? You know, it was, it, it was when I turned the disconnect switch back on and the unit started up, it was like, it was almost like the indoor blower motor was single phase and it was making that kind of a sound. And that led me to look down the path. So big picture diagnosis, as I always say, guys, look at everything and don't just rush through these calls, even on a Saturday night overtime one, because the way that I do it is, you know, I don't have to go back there Monday to finish diagnosing. I can just go ahead and submit a quote. You know, that's, that's wasted time that we have to go back there from a business standpoint. I look at it as, you know, that's another call that I have to send someone to on Monday. And that means that there's another call that they don't get to go to, you know, because I wasn't thorough on the weekend. Now I'm not saying to spend hours and hours and hours. Okay. But I mean, you know, I got the unit up and running. That's good enough. I got a big idea. And the, the quote that I give the customer is not going to be like this, 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 it's going to be, Hey, there's a bunch of issues here. Here's a ballpark figure. Do you want us to investigate further? Do you want to um, consider replacing the unit? Where do you want us to go? And then they can lead me in the right direction and say, yeah, there's no way we're changing that unit. So let's go out there and get it fixed, you know, or, or that kind of stuff. Okay. So anyways, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Uh, send me an email, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. Don't hesitate to give me feedback, leave comments. Let me know if you think I did something wrong. If you have a better idea of doing something, I'm always looking for feedback, whether it be good or bad. Uh, live streams, uh, work permitting every Monday night, 5 PM Pacific time on my YouTube channel. I usually answer all the questions that I can get my hands on. Um, when you guys send me emails, Facebook comments, YouTube comments, um, social media, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everything, just Google. I mean, uh, the, the names on all the social media is just HVACR videos. So just search HVACR videos on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, and obviously you know where YouTube is. But anyways, that's pretty much it, guys. We'll catch you on the next one, okay?